Adams coming on saying, do you think explosive movements are healthy over time or are these, these their ex- ex- bleh, excessive micro traumas that build up and eventually cause injury? I mean, like kettlebell swings, jump snatches, etc. No, if anything, I would say the explosive stuff is extremely good because typically with age, you know, I'm getting older myself, uh, generally the thing that we start to lose uh, as we get older is that pop, that power, that drive. I used to work at a gym that had dedicated fitness classes. We didn't teach co- uh, clients what we wanted to do. Uh, there was a prime directive of, okay, this is the workout we're working on today. And we had an entire day of the week, I think it was Thursdays, that was dedicated towards power and explosiveness. And the whole idea with the gym was, you know, train like an athlete and that sort of thing. Because a lot of us, we have power and explosiveness when we play sports when we're younger and stuff. But when we get older, we, you know, we lose that spring in our step, so to speak. And so being able to develop and maintain that power is definitely a good thing. Now, like any other form of training, yes, it can lead to injury. Yes, it can be detrimental, but it's more in the programming and the application of it. Okay. And you don't need a whole lot to be able to do explosive stuff. Seriously, if you got a kettlebell laying around, I'm like, yeah, do like, you know, 20 kettlebell swings a few times a week. That can do wonders for you. It doesn't need to be a lot. A lot of times in our fitness culture, we use car- we use um, explosive movements as a form of cardio. You know, okay, do 50 box jumps. Okay, then do a, a 200 kettlebell swings and stuff. We got to jack up the heart rate. Got to metcon this stuff. No, most of the time when it comes to real, true, effective, explosive movement, you're actually going the opposite direction. In uh, explosive calisthenics, aka cal- um, convict conditioning three, uh, Paul Wade, it, that's a whole book about using calisthenics for explosive pop and power. And his whole approach was keep the numbers low, like three reps. You know, if you've got an explosive movement, do three reps or six or nine, typically. Don't do 50 kind of thing. Because if you're trying to develop a lot of power, that's the same thing fundamentally as generating a lot of tension, which means you don't want to have a lot of volume. You want the volume to be small. So generally, when it comes to explosive stuff, keep the volume low, keep the fatigue fairly low, and you only need a few movements too. Like let's say, you know, a kettlebell swing, some jump lunges, and maybe some sort of like punching, you know, against a heavy bag or something. It doesn't take a whole lot to maintain that power, which is why it's such a a sad thing to see when people lose that power is it doesn't take a whole lot. Back when, again, in that gym, we had an entire workout developing power and strength and or uh, explosiveness. And I always looked at it like, we don't need a whole workout of this. We just need like a couple movements throughout the week. And that's going to cover us. So it doesn't take much. But yeah, definitely a good thing to maintain that power and explosiveness. Highly endorse that.